I'm sitting on my couch usually. The room is dark, the only light coming from the television, which is playing a rerun of In the Abyss of Love. It's the episode where Tommy finds his sister's body under the floorboards, except there's no noise. People talk, but nothing comes out. At first, I thought it might be muted, but I couldn't find the remote to fix it. The silence is so eerie. The longer I sit there, the more uncomfortable I felt. Lucas Desmond looked up from his notepad and pushed his glasses up his nose. Miss Stone, how often do you have this dream? Rose wiped her wet eyes. I don't know, maybe two or three times a week? I don't dream of anything else. He nodded. I see. Go on, please. She sighed. Eventually the silence gets to be too much and I have to leave, but when I get up all the sounds come back. The television is deafening. Tommy is screaming at the lead detective that they aren't finding his sister's killer, and sirens are blaring in the background. It's around that time when I hear the other sounds. Lucas frowned. The screams? They aren't just screams. They're pleads. I need to know where they're coming from, so I follow them to an old shed in the backyard. I'm standing outside the door of the shed, but the door is all wrong. Wrong? He raised an eyebrow. It's not right. It isn't a door that belongs on a shed, it's a bedroom door. There's a little pink cat sticker stuck under the doorknob, and the letters M.V. are carved in the center. I don't want to open it, but I can hear the little girl screaming on the other side. She's calling for help, pleading. I can hear her choking and gasping. She's crying about her legs, pleading for them to stop. I reach for the door, but just as my hand touches the knob, it opens. Lucas sighed and closed his notebook. This was the third person since he'd moved to Fells Glen that had come to him complaining about the same dream. All of them started and ended the same. Please continue. It only opens a crack and a bloody arm reaches out. The girl cries for me to help her. She wants me to grab her hand and pull her out. Her hand grabs at the floor and her screams echo throughout the cold night. I want to help her, but there's something wrong. I'm not sure, but the idea of grabbing that arm makes my skin crawl. My mind is screaming to just walk away. Lucas nods, and... Rose starts to cry, and I do.